And what that basically means is less distortion, less ghosting. So if you're shooting in low light, for example, you're going to get sharper images, say, with this one. But that doesn't take away from this, that this is a very good lens in itself. Mm. But if I now put this back onto the body of the camera, how we do that, we line up the... Can you still see the difference? So that earlier was at its uh, widest angle, which is 14 millimeters. Now that's at its widest angle of 14 millimeters. That is now at its longest zoom, which is 42. Mm -hmm. If I now put that on there and extend that to 42, you can actually see the difference is actually quite remarkable. Of course, this has a power zoom in it, so it has a motor inside. A silent, by the way. It's dark at night, the, yeah, and you want to be quiet, you do be discreet, uh, you don't want to upset uh, people around you, etc. That you tells me a lot about what kind of music you're listening to, that, oh, like that would make a difference. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, we couldn't possibly comment on that. Um, but as you can see, the size is quite remarkable, both lightweight, but, uh, um, it, you know, when I turn this off, and then move that back again to its uh, widest angle, it is, so again, it's about compactness. Mostly is made of glass anyway, and glass is always going to weigh the same amount. Yes, uh, it is. But apparently, you've been using some technologies that uh, manage it just to deal with current physics, but still having yeah. a lighter lens. Then. And this is what I mean about the black box technology: is that the technicians and the engineers in Yagamata that create our lenses um, in Japan are, uh, you know, having to cram very, you know, fine glass mm. into a, a body like this is quite a challenge. And We've got the 12 to 35 mil lens. Like well. Tele, uh, tele lens, tele object. Uh, no, the f well, it, it is a tele zoom, yeah, yeah uh, at that angle. And then we've also got uh, the 45 to 175 zoom lens as well. So we can go into more detail about that. But that's similar technology that lens okay. with that. Good. Then hopefully that answers. Till the this has been your answer. Then continuing with Union V, how does the G? Well, see, everything is about the G5 once again. Exactly. How does the G5 perform? The Lumix G3 was actually very good in low light uh, conditions, and still is, because it's still current. Mm -hmm. It has a, an ISO setting, so the sensitivity of how much light comes onto the sensor uh, of around ISO 6400. This is double. So what, again, that means to people that are going to be looking at this for a future purchase or currently have it for a, uh, advice, is that in lower light conditions, there'll be less uh, need to use the flash. And at the same time, um, you'll be able to have um, uh, uh, increase. Uh, I've been taking listening again. Some of this quite uh, music. it's like music. I'm yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, took some shots earlier while we were setting out over the last few days, and the performance of this in, in you know, these low light conditions is very mm -hmm. good. So really bright, uh, um, less noise, or what we call grain in the film. But you could use that to your advantage if you wanted to be creative with, um, with your photography. And that's, that's, that's the point. Sometimes, like, uh, try and error. That's what I recommend everyone when it comes to cameras. you'll pick out that you'll um, love and, and you know, cherish for a long time. Nothing beats experience. Absolutely. That's what it is. So Union 5.